Welcome to the show, standout Cowboys wide receiver Amari Cooper. Sir, how are you this morning? I'm good, man. Couldn't be better. How are you? We're doing very well. We appreciate your time very much. Now, you might not be able to speak to the specifics, but I'm just curious because we're hearing word that, you know, Tyron and Jordan Lewis left the field this morning with uh, injuries. Do you guys or do you personally notice these things while practice is going on or are you separated do people talk about it through the rest of the practice how does that go uh no man you know practice is so organized so regimented um you know we don't try to waste any time out there uh meaning we're always moving from drill to drill so i don't we don't really have time to you know notice those things because we're all each trying to figure out what we need to be doing on the next play so i didn't even notice after Zoom, after Zoom, after Zoom, how excited are you to actually be on a real-life football field doing real-life football things again? I mean, it's real-life fun again, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're football players. You know, that's how we're bred. Um, you know, we used to every year coming back playing football around the same time, and, you know, this year was a bit different. Um, so, uh I'm I'm excited to just be back out here and get getting back into the swing the swing of things how I'm used to. Now, Amari, we we heard the uh three one thousand yard receivers compliment that you gave to that trio. Is there any way that McCarthy's plan or Kellen Moore's plan is to also have five one thousand yard receivers with <laughs> Zeke and uh and Tony Pollard catching that many passes too? <laughs> that's a good that's a good one uh <laughs> i mean hopefully obviously the more yards we put up as an offense um through the air and, uh, and on the ground um the more likely we are to go go ahead and win um win games you know so uh why not is that is that something that the this coaching staff wants to see a little more from zeke wants to use him more variance uh, rather than just in between the tackles? Or is that they just say, you know, we, we see Zeke's uh, ability, so let's just take advantage of everything he can do? Yeah, I mean, Zeke is a very versatile back. You know, I, um, even f even from the day I first stepped in the building up until now, you know, I, I, I noticed his ability to do more than just run the ball and, and run people over. You know, he can, he can do anything you ask him to do. He, he can catch the ball out the backfield. He can run outside. Uh, inside, uh, he block, he can do everything. So, Amari, listening to uh, Coach McCarthy uh, doing some of these press conferences, he's talked about C.D. Lamb and Gallup and you and how you guys are so versatile. Is it going to be something this year where we see you lining up some in the slot and then C.D. goes outside and then you and C.D. are outside and then Michael Gallup's in the slot? Are you having to learn uh, all three spots or are you kind of sticking to one spot? Uh, definitely not sticking to one spot, um, moving around inside, outside. Um, and, and, you know, that's what I expect. That's what I want. You know, I don't want to be in the same spot uh, every time it becomes predictable. Now, how, does, how does that change? How does that change the way a defense then, like, sees what's going on? Does it confuse them? And does that, is that, a, does that give you an extra step? What does that give an offense whenever, whenever every, all you guys are all in different spots in the field? Uh yeah, I mean um they have to make different checks and things like that. Uh it depends on how they how what their game plan is for us. Like if they have somebody following me around, for example, um every play. Um then is that guy is that guy going to go outside inside at number 2 and then inside at number 3? What if they line me up in the backfield? You know, is he going to is he going to um guard me then? You know, so it it it, it just depends on their game plan. What if they line you up in the backfield and just start feeding you handoffs <laughs> 10 to 15 times a game? Would we consider that? <laughs> no, nah, I'll leave that to Zeke. That's, that's Zeke's job right there. So one of the things that I've been fascinated by all, already, all kinds of fun videos coming out of training camp, is the one-handed catch drill. And it's not the drill itself. It's the fake running and arm pumping that leads leads up to it. How important is pumping your arms when you're fake running <laughs> in getting you ready for that? Because I think it's hilarious. Why do you think it's hilarious? Just because Michael Gallup is, like, getting after it, man, and I think he's a little bit ahead of you in the arm pumping category. 
Um, how, okay, so the question was how important is it? I yeah. mean, it's uh, it's movement. You know, you're on the field. Um, when you're running routes and you're about to catch a ball, you, you never catch any ball standing still, um, per se, unless you're finished with the route and the, the, the ball is really late. But even then, you know, you probably won't catch the ball because it'll be an interception if you don't come back to the ball. So you're never really standing still catching the ball. So that's that's why that's an emphasis. Well, you, you have to keep in mind, I need explanations like this because I am not athletic at all. So I need explanations <laughs> for how to do these things. And will you go back and watch the tape and see if you need to up your arm movement game. <laughs> nah, nah, I think I'm, I think I'm good on that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Amari Cooper joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan, and I, I think that a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of questions about Dak, uh, always about you know off season stuff, you know his contract stuff and all that. I want to know when you're when you're catching a ball from him when you're receiving a ball from him what are the qualities of his throwing motion what are the qualities of what he sees on the field that you admire that you think makes him a, a championship caliber quarterback uh, i mean the first thing that jumps out is his, his will to win you know he'll he'll do things that sometimes is not advisable for a quarterback to do <laughs> in terms of you know putting his body on the line um, so that's the first thing that jumps out. But um, as far as the the ball and how he throws the ball, I mean, it's just, it's an easy ball, easy ball to catch. I mean, if you ask a lot of receivers around the league who um, takes pride in their run after catch, they love a ball that's easy and not, you know, very, very hard because that kind of takes away from your ability to run after the catch because you have to focus so much on the catch. But when it's an easy ball, you know you can just snag it and in, 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 in focus on your moves after the catch to try to go score. Um, so that's 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 a great quality of his. So Amari, last year, obviously the season didn't go the way you guys wanted as a team. And one of the things offensively, you guys put up a lot of great numbers, but one thing that wasn't really efficient or at the top of the league was red zone efficiency. So I know it's very early in practice and you have somewhat of a new coaching staff with a new head coach. How much uh, importance is being placed on guys. We do a great job of moving the ball and getting it into scoring position, but we need to get seven instead of three. Yeah, that's an emphasis for every team. Look, I mean, you know, usually the the the, the top teams in red zone efficiency, they're the ones that go to the playoffs and have a chance at winning the thing. Um, and 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 it's easy to move the ball out in the open field, but when it's um, when it when it's in a red zone, it's a lot less space. Um, because you have you have more defenders in terms of that back line, um, and you know they the teams just play different. Like the DBs, they don't like you can't sell the go ball because it's nowhere the it's nowhere to go. You know, so they just kind of just stand there. Um, so it makes it more difficult. Um, but at the same time, you know there are things that you can do as an offense to kind of combat that, and that's 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 what we need to focus on so that we can get better down there. Do you ever do you ever get the sense that some defenses will concede some space because they know they can lock down in the red zone though and keep you from scoring or hold you to a field goal and that also makes it more difficult in the red zone? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was getting at. That's what that's exactly what teams do. You know, um, when you, when you're down there because it's, I mean, look, when you're on offense, you don't start down there, right? Unless it's a a crazy turnover, but when you're out in the field, obviously they're playing defense and they want you to punt. But when you're already in the red zone, then it's like, hey, you know, a field goal. They want you to get a field goal. So the motto down there for them is field goal. Hold them to a field goal. And so they'll do any. They'll give up yards, but they they're not trying to allow you to score a touchdown. Who's the Who's the most competitive out of you and Gallup and C.D. Lamb uh, so far from what you've seen? Um, I'm sure we'd all say that we're the most competitive. <laughs> like if you ask CD, <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll say him, and if you ask Gallup, he'll say him. Um, but we don't really like we, we're not hard on competing against each other. But when we're, when we're going up against the DVs, you know, obviously we're trying to win every win every rep, and we're mad if we don't, you know. Yeah, and that was something I noticed last year, Mari, was, uh, you know, every week uh, the Cowboys.com would put out the video with the uh, the mic'd up stuff from you guys. And it just seemed like every time they'd cut over to you and Cobb and, and Gallup, y'all had this, like, great relationship. Like, y'all were having fun on the sidelines, especially when you got to abuse New York Giants cornerbacks. It was really <laughs> great. Uh, but the uh, the – 
the idea, like, how does that happen? Is it you that kind of sets that relationship with them, or just a, a good group of guys? And how does CD kind of fit into with you know how y'all get along? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, on game day, it's it's supposed to be fun. You know, that's why we play this game. We don't play it so that we can practice and then go out there on game day and and be sad. You know, we want to have fun, but part of that fun is going out there and dominating um, and, and making the plays that we're supposed to make. And that's why we're here now at practice, um, preparing for that, so that we can go out there and have fun on on, on Sundays and be laughing on on the sidelines uh, and everything like that. And I, I mean, CD fits in well. Trust me. I mean, he he loves to joke around with us. Uh, we're always having fun. Pro Bowl receiver Amari Cooper joining us here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, Amari, when it comes to what you guys are going to have to play. Uh, at this year at Alabama, 100,000 fans, SEC crowds are crazy. I mean, I can't imagine you, you you've, with the Raiders, obviously you have the Raider Nation and now at the Cowboys. Have you thought about what it's going to be like to play an NFL football game with nobody in the stands? Um, I have thought about it, but I can't really, you know, rationalize it because it's never been a reality for me. Um. But I, I would say I'm kind of pretty accustomed to having to um, adapt to any situation and go out there and just and just overcome it. Um, and I mean, if you really think about it, when we 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 practice every day, like like they say, you get great by repetition, right? We practice every day without fans. So um, I think the real logic is to go out there and play without fans, right? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. What was the was the same kind of mindset? Did that apply to you when it came to like any decisions about whether or not you wanted to play this year, or do you have any concern? Because obviously, a lot of our listeners, you know, they've had a lot of concern, or it's impacted a lot of different families and stuff. Did you have any of those concerns, or were you like, "I'm concerned, but I'm gonna play"? Um, yeah. So the COVID didn't affect my family, from what I know, um, and so it didn't even cross my mind to not play until somebody asked me about it for the first time. That was the first time it crossed my mind to um, not g come out here and, and play. I was like, yeah, I, I didn't even think about not playing because it didn't. It really didn't hit home for me. Um, obviously, I know of people who have family members who it has affected, but um, n none of my family members have been affected. So, Amari, uh, last thing from me here. Uh, it's just it's one of those weird things that happened last year to you. You had unbelievable games at home and not the best games on the road. Is there any explanation for that, or it just happened to be on the road that, you know, uh, you didn't have your best games? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would the way I would explain it is I had a, a lot less targets on the road versus what I had at home. And so I think that's the most logical way to explain it. Um, and I think um, if you were to think about it, and it would have been um, the other way around. If I had more targets on the road than I had at home, then I think I'm pretty sure that I would have had um, more production on the road than I have at home. And, and I guess that's the other thing. Like you, you want to make that uh, transition change a little bit this year. Is there anything in the first uh, few practices you've worked with McCarthy that you're like McCarthy could get a little bit better at this, or do you kind of <laughs> like what your coach is giving you right now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I kind of like what my. I'm trying to let you guys finish laughing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of like what my coach is giving me now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you jumping on with us this morning, especially after practice. Thank you very much for your time. Good, sir. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Amari Cooper, Pro Bowl wide receiver from the Dallas Cowboys right here on your home of the Dallas Cowboys 105.3 The Fan.